hi guys and welcome back to episode two of the PJ Life pod. So today we're going to look at different styles of golf course and which ones we prefer. Right, let's go. So I was going to kick us off and I imagine we're going to the seaside, Simon. Yes, of course. There, no golf course tour <laughs> would be shock. complete without going to the seaside first. So first of all, we're going to talk about what is a Lynx course and why is a Lynx course different to sort of any other course that might be by the seaside. Um, Obviously, golf originated in Scotland, uh, St Andrews being the most famous historic golf course. I'm sure people in Scotland would argue the toss for other courses, but I think we can all agree St Andrews is the most famous of the old, old courses. Yeah. So yeah. St Andrews, the town, was obviously built many, 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 many years ago, and it ran right up to the sea. And over the years, the sea receded and left a little strip of land, which the town people didn't really know what to do with. So... They kept sheep on the land to start with uh, and then gradually over time became used for more recreational activities and eventually golf became home to that piece of land and so born was golf and Lynx golf especially. So kind of things that define Lynx golf, obviously sandy soil, very, very deep pot bunkers. Anybody know why pot bunkers started, Adam? Can you take yeah, that sand doesn't blow out of them. Sand doesn't blow out of them. Mm-hmm. Also many theories out there that sheep dug the first pot bunkers to escape the windy conditions in yeah. and around the seaside there so sandy soil very well draining golf courses hard fast and fiery land in the summer very kind mm-hmm. of thin blades of grass with thick roots on them you get a very distinctive hollow noise certainly on the yeah. greens and on the fairways if you're lucky enough to see a ball land <laughs> near you or unlucky enough to the way you look at it but yeah, yeah, sandy, sandy soil, very fast, very firm, not many trees, because often it's very, very windy, and therefore trees don't grow very well. Well, if uh, they do, they tend to grow in a certain direction. They grow sideways, <laughs> don't they? Like, like they do at Sherring, and very famously. Yeah. Um, so I think for where we are in Suffolk, the only really kind of true Lynx golf course in Suffolk, I would say, is Felix Felixstowe Ferry, right yep. up next to the seawall. On a very, very high tide and stormy day, the sea could potentially get onto the golf course. It sits at the same level as the golf course. Yeah. Uh, And I think that's kind of the only real proper true Lynx golf course in Suffolk. If you went to. Yeah, a lot of the other ones are sort of a little bit inland, aren't they? Yeah, a little bit like Old Brew, which can kind of be the right kind of soil, but it's too far, too far inland. Southfold. Southfold, the same. Uh, and then you then head up to Norfolk, where you have Hunstanton, uh, Brancaster and Sheringham that are classed as Lynx golf courses. Um, whereas things like Cromer uh, and other golf courses, uh, Galston would be definitely be more classed as clifftop courses. So, yes, mm-hmm. right next to the seaside, but definitely not the, those distinctive turf conditions that I think Lynx golf courses are. Anything yep. to add, anyone? Well, I didn't know... That that's what I thought Lynx just meant by the sea. So, you know, or by water. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously the Lynx actually comes from the fact that it's reclaimed land from the sea. So, mm-hmm. you know, which means that obviously different different conditions underfoot. So that was yeah. certainly Yeah. Again, it's that it's that word link, isn't it? Linking the land to the sea. It's the land that that did that, that probably had no other use, certainly in other parts mm-hmm. of the country and the world. For building, for building houses, you probably can't build houses on sandy-based soil, certainly not many, many years ago. And yeah, some fantastic, I would argue, best golf courses in the world um, mm-hmm. are, are obviously Lynx courses. And Pebble Beach, I think, would be classed as another Lynx course. Kiowa Island, the ocean course there, would be classed as Lynx golf yeah. courses. And some of the most amazing, spectacular courses around and about are Lynx golf. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. if it's not Lynx golf, it must be something yeah. else. So, Adam, give us the two big categories of golf course that people need to know about. So, we'll kick off with um, Parkland course. So, a Parkland golf course is essentially what you'd see week in, week out, PJ Tour. So, very lush, very green, often tree-lined, um, quite man-made in some ways in terms of, of built-up areas, banking, um, what they call false fronts on greens that obviously sit above you that wouldn't actually have, have like in a Lynx course, you can often run those in the fairway and, the, and the, the green are often level with each other. Whereas on a Parkland golf course, they're often built very separate. 
they don't occur naturally, do they? That's no, and you'll often area. see where um, some people learn to play golf. They'll often have a certain type of game mm. that matches the, the sort of the conditions that they grew up with. So I know from from my point of view, I grew up on a Parkland course, and and I'm lucky enough to go to the states and play there a little bit as well. So it was I play a lot through the air because that is how that golf course was set out in front of me. So that lush green built up sort of very American style golf course is, is really Parkland and, and round here. So obviously Simon and, and Ryan, you're a member at Berry. That's, that's very much Parkland. Um, the Suffolk's Parkland. Then you start going out, like looking at other aspects when you start to build in some other parts of other types of golf course into a similar, similar layout. Mm. Yeah. It all depends on the topography, doesn't it? So, You've obviously got a lot more water at Suffolk because that's naturally occurring where you yeah. are. Whereas some golf courses that would be parkland might have more pine trees, maybe or yeah. type of. But it's so, park. like for example, like when we went to Kings Lynn, that, that's that's very sort of parkland in mm. in its look, but little to no water on the way round. Yeah. But using the tree lines to really map it, so you like your wobens. Mm-hmm. Um, Wentworth that sort of style of golf course whereas and again Wentworth that that water doesn't necessarily naturally occur in that position no definitely but, not certainly but not they're, now. The, they're the parts then and for me it's a, it's a lovely look that sort of on the edge of the water there where you've got the the slatting up and around and and all of that built into the banking it looks looks really really good yeah, yeah, yeah. so why do you think that parkland courses are more prevalent on tour than links courses or other types because they can be built and designed to hold the tournaments that, that they have. So, for example, Celtic Manor 2010 mm. course, Le Golf National, the yes. Albatross course, purpose-built for that. Yeah. Purposely put course, in place. Yeah, Le Golf National like, would have had that, that golf course would have been built, would have been redone completely just to house the Ryder Cup. Like, it's not the course. You need a big enough, yeah. There. You need a big enough spectator base to get round it. It needs to be easily from tee to green to tee to green all the way around. Have the banking in, and yeah. and also to be able to move that around. You can't do that with a links course because you almost destroy the character of yeah. what was put down originally. Yeah, and car parking and tented villages. Yeah, and like all of that. Stuff. Yeah, tented villages and all the rest. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Ryan, how far away was the Golf National from anything else? Oh, it's just like I remember driving. Yeah, I remember driving, and we were because obviously we both drove drove there, and it was like, and we arrived and went, "Oh, right, we need to go and get some food." We were hungry, and like looking at, there was nothing nearby. You know, drive like, through an industrial estate to get there. Yeah, you? yeah, we like we were on the properly on the outskirts. It says it's in Paris. It's nowhere near Paris. It, like <laughs> you know, it's like it's, it's like, close to Paris. It's like being Stansted in Reading is to London. Bit, tell you, yeah, in London. exactly. Yeah, it's like saying, oh, you know, you know, I'm a Londoner, I live in Romford and things like that. You know, it's still it's good 45, 50 minutes before you actually, you know. Um, in the city. And those those sort of places are just, they're vast pieces of property. And there's, you know, so much of the property that just doesn't actually act as a golf course at all. It is just bits built there for, like they say, the, it was built for, for hosting big competitions. And those bits are built just for the spectators. They're not really built to be, I mean, we played on them. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it's because we couldn't hit it on the fairway. But um, yeah, it's mainly for it was built for spectators and 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 the the net well, the sort of the banking makes that gallery style. Yeah, so people can see aspect. Yeah, so people can see and it, it's sort of stadium style, if you like. Exactly. Yeah, that was the one thing that I picked up on being at the Ryder Cup. There, like the sound travelled yeah. mm-hmm. and it just echoed so well where they put those holes. Yeah, it was very, very impressive. So if we're inland and we're not parkland, what else are we likely to be, Adam? Certainly in this country. Yeah, so we're just uh, like, we're going to go with Heathland course. So mm. Heathland is very much like parkland in terms of it's inland. It's going to be slightly less manicured as a general rule. And now yeah. we will say general rule because yeah. I will bring up somewhere that is very manicured in a minute. So less manicured, less trees mm-hmm. most of the time to some of the time. Yeah. But you're gonna you're gonna start to see like lavender and gorse lining fairways, and, um, and instead of it being thick like rough areas, you're gonna have heather 
laying on the ground. So that becomes another another part of the golf course. Generally, it tends to be on sandy soil as well. Mm. So like proper free draining, so it can throw it down all morning. Be absolutely fine when you go out there uh, walking around. And also middle of summer, it gets a little bit linksy and it's, it gets a bit fiery underfoot. You can start to have to use the, the floor a bit more. And some of those false fronts will disappear. There'll be some that have a false front on them, mm-hmm. but some of them will be able to let, let you like use the ground and, and run those balls in as well. So almost, an example, almost hybrid style then, wouldn't you yeah, say? Hybrid, yeah, it's like sort of, sort of Parkland in, links, sort of hybrid in, in between the two. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, obviously, I say less manicured. It it sometimes can have that look to it because a bit like Pinehurst or something like that that runs off into those native areas that it gets a bit sandy around the sides. It looks less manicured, but actually the bit that you actually are meant to play off is, is very, very, very manicured. Mm. So locally to us, people and courses? I love that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, well, my, my favourite, or I would class as a Heathland course um, in Suffolk would be Thorpness. Yeah. Is that so Thorpness, it, it is on the coast, but it's nowhere near the seafront. Yeah. But then you have that sort of um, gorse uh, that lines the holes as well. It really sort of nicely pens you in at times and, and mm. allows you to to shape those holes nicely with with the natural habitat that is around you as well. It sort of yeah. picks picks in and around that really, really good golf course. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, Ryan, you played there in very cold, wet. Oh, it was it was naff, wasn't it? So you, you still weren't playing because you, your knee was, was still in, in repair. Mm. Um, I remember introducing uh, Wavy. Ben to hand warmers. Ben to hand warmers, yeah. Yeah, that was a revelation of the day. But um, yeah, it, 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 I think when it's wet, it is tough, isn't it? Those sort of, that sort of golf course. Because like you say, Adam, it, it's wet for a bit and then it does drain away and, and it does mm. change. The grass, is, the grass is very, very different to to Parkland style grass. It's very tight. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, it goes a bit more length change your game. Yeah. Mm. Definitely have to change your game. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was good. And plenty of heather, plenty of gorse, with, you know, spent plenty of time in that stuff. Yeah. Would you class yeah. Sunningdale? Yes. Heathland? Yeah. yeah. Obviously, Walton Heath down the road is obviously Heathland. Yeah. Um, it's just all sort of sand belt courses around that area. They're, they've all got an element of like, gorse and heather that that really sort of defines a heathland course to me that that changes things slightly when you start to go from sort of just tree if like woburn and sunningdale are like mm. if you put them side by side you would pick the the heathland out of that yeah definitely i think locally to us you'd go maybe woodbridge and ipswich golf Wood, club woodbridge yeah can't comment on purd it's never been oh, of course not no i always forget that that's definitely one no. for the for the 2021 one to, one to play but yeah Woodbridge is, yeah, Woodbridge definitely um, that's a great golf course oh, yeah, Woodbridge fantastic right you, so you've gone right you've dangled Purdis for to me for a couple of times and both times they've called us off because it's been wet and they're like no nope, we've shut the yeah. course yeah they're very uh, which is a shame oh, yeah they are, they, yeah definitely so that kind of covers what would you say Adam 80 90% yeah I was going to yeah I think that kind of sums most of them up. But Ryan, you're going to hit us with some outliers. Well, yeah, you gave me the, uh, the I think, let's say the tougher task of, of research. Of course. But, um, yeah. I'd say, like, so the next one is, it would be the desert style. Desert is is a big yeah. style. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, style. well, yeah, modern. So we've got, obviously, the, the Middle East style of desert and then sort of the sort of southwest of America sort of style of desert as well, which are quite different but obviously both manufactured so the only the grass there there is no it's all force grown it's you know there's a lot of heavy maintenance that is required to create a desert course um it's they use the uh, especially sort of the american styles use the natural topography of of the land like uh what is it scottsdale where they have the phoenix uh, waste management that you know that's really used that sort of the land to yeah, create they use a golf the course. Yeah, waste areas and bits quite well. Don't yeah, they? but when you go to the other sort of the other way around around the world, and we go out to sort of Dubai and the Emirates and and that, they are just completely false. Let's, created. We've got loads of money. Let's bang a golf course here and make it just. It's the most 
personally think it's, there's no character in those golf, golf courses. There's no history. There's no nothing. It was literally a flat bit of desert and everything there is man-made. There's a lot of people down the other end of this have just gone... <gasps> <gasps> But that, that's the beauty of it, isn't it? It's that, it's that mm. personal perspective of it all. Like, love it or hate it, desert golf courses are there for a reason. They satisfy mm. a hell of a lot of people that want to go mm. and play those golf courses. They can oh. do what they want, can't they, on those on that bits of land? Because they've made it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's great, you know. And, and obviously, you can you can set up the most challenging, or you can you can set up every hole however you you want to want to create it. And and I'm sure for uh, sort of course architects that blank canvas can be amazing because you can literally do anything you like yes yeah, especially a blank um, canvas and a, and a blank checkbook uh, exactly two good things away, to go together and away you go and, and you're going to make you know and i'm sure they're they're great to play but from like a a, a history point of view and a sort mm-hmm. of yeah I get that. you know there's there's no sort of charm if you like the charm is okay. different isn't it yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so yeah, um, there was a, a so I read a, uh, a quote online to say that they uh, they appear to violate a widely accepted principle of the golfing world. Uh, course ex- architecture should require minimal alteration to the surrounding landscape. That's when like, you've got no surrounding when, landscape, though, when you've got no surrounding <laughs> you have to landscape, make it. <laughs> you're gonna have to make it. Yeah. Um, and then the other style. Uh, you sort of be looking at like mountainous golf courses, cliff tops as well. So mm-hmm. uh, your kidnappers that you mentioned in our last podcast, I and uh, they are Parkland style, so tree line quite a lot. Obviously in the mountains, I mean some of them are like if anything they are stunning. Oh yeah, like mm. oh, I mean you also picked uh, the one in Switzerland, the San um, San Sierra, yeah. San yeah. So they look great. Um, and obviously the altitude, you might feel a bit better as well that you can actually, mm. those, those slightly shorter hitters might actually go and feel a bit better about themselves as slightly higher it is altitude. A, it is a strange, strange way to play. It mm. just and is odd. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they can obviously very undulating built into sort of cliff tops and, and sort of, you know, the, again, the, they're not going to be flat and these ones have to match the, the topiary of the, of the land. So um, but yeah, they, they're lush, they're green, they look stunning, don't they? As a as a player, you know, to uh, have the Alps in the background, beautiful white topped mountains, sort of visually, mm, yeah, amazing. brilliant, brilliant style of golf course. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then there's always crazy golf, yes, you know, as a as, a, best, as a, best another time. style of golf course, um, yes, pirates which, coach. Uh, Pirates go. Pirates, yeah. Let, you know, get down the seafront, <laughs> and uh, and and actually, we joke about it, but they are becoming more and more popular within within cities. Uh, you yeah, know, definitely. London, they're popping up all over the place. In like even in central, right in the middle of London, in the business district, uh, yep. there's a there's right a place the called city. Swingers, mm. right in the middle of the city. And uh, my girlfriend and I went um, to to play, and it's this or the businessmen in there, you know, they've loosened their tie and yeah. after a day's work and they're, you know, it's more of a social thing, isn't it? There's, there's alcohol, there's beers, there's, there's food and there's people playing adventure golf in a, yeah. in a not sort of an office block style building. And Why yeah, not? it's not so far it, from the Gherkin, is it? No, no, it's, it's, yeah. rather, it's and, and there's plenty popping up all over the country and, and sort of it's becoming more than just, just your seaside, seafront, you mm. know, windmill and yeah, clowns nose and um, pirate ship sort of thing. It's it's becoming. And then we've a big been business. down to play top golf as well, Silas. So mm. They've got one there, mm. and yeah, so really good. One. Oh, yeah, the only other one, right, that... Ryan. Go on, in. Go yes. On. So pick one. If you had to pick one to play for the rest of your life, what style are you playing? What style? Mm. I don't. I don't think I've got enough um, experience of playing the different styles to be able to make a. A decision, okay. um, but right. I now. think the way the way I play golf because I've started because I've played Parkland and I do I you know I do play it in the air. I would pick Parkland. I think mm-hmm. there's a bit there could be a bit more variety within that style of golf course. I know personally. why you've done that because you could pick Augusta then, can't you? <laughs> I could do. Yeah, like, like your style. Well done. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go on then. What, what would you have then, Adam? If if 
if you had the... I would I would play Heathland if I could play one style of golf course for the rest of my life. I, yeah, I find it's, find it's a nice mix between the two. Um, it, it some elements in some golf courses like Sunningdale, for example, I get I get their fix because I do like the whole. I love being at Woburn. I love that sound of hitting a ball within an enclosed, like wooded area. It sounds amazing to me. That's that's one of the things that I really really like. So you still get that sort of feel when you play, at, like Sunningdale, for example. Mm. But I do like the way that the header comes in at certain points, and they use the, like the gorse to to sort of map some of the holes out. So and it's not quite as sort of target orientated. There is times of the year you'll have to use the ground and there will be times of the year where you're going to have to fly all the way there. So yeah, you get that nice, nice mix, mix for me. I'd, I would go that way at it. Yeah, I think the, the heather also gives you a lovely definition, doesn't it, to the holes when it's yeah. properly in bloom and purple looks mm. really pretty, doesn't it? it? it like, last year at Walton Heath was a little bit brutal. <laughs> Lots of, it's easy to find stuff. the ball, just impossible to hit it out of. Oh, just like literally trying to hit out a treacle yeah mm. get out of a cargo <laughs> next um, I, I obviously would go Lynx um, yeah. it's always been my favourite I think because because it was a bit of a treat growing up to go to the seaside to play golf mm-hmm. um, I like the way that it changes so much I think the environment changes massively by yeah. the seaside literally you can be playing golf as the tide changes and when the tide yeah. changes, the wind changes. That wind whips up, changes. yes. Mm. Everything, yeah. literally in half an hour, everything can change dramatically. Uh, I also like the fact that sandy base soil means that I can just bunt the ball forwards off the tee so I can keep it in play with like a six iron or a five iron off the tee, which is always <laughs> helpful. Um, I just love Lynx Golf. I love the pot bunkering. I love the, the, the difficult challenge of those real deep, deep bunkers. And mm-hmm. I couldn't live the rest of my life without being by the sea enough because obviously I'm a bit obsessed with yeah. seaside and stuff. So that would be, be for me. But there is no right or wrong to this, is there? It's just personal preference. I no. Think no. My, my favourite golf course is in Suffolk, uh, Heathland, so Purdis, Woodbridge, Thorpe Ness. Yeah. So read into that what you will. Maybe that's because mm. we're not spoilt for Lynx golf courses around here. And and that's where I was going to go with it. So like I'd never been a massive fan of Lynx because no. I hadn't played enough of it. Yeah. But having been on a trip to, to Scotland and played a bit um elsewhere, it's it's suddenly you start when you play like those top, top rated um, Lynx courses, you start to have a different appreciation. Yeah. Like you go and play Hun Stanton day in, mm-hmm. day out, you, yeah. you can have a different appreciation to Lynx golf all of a sudden because that place is is just a stunning place to play golf. Yeah. I think the beauty of it all is is that we're not forced to play one type of golf course. We can go and visit all the different types of golf course. They are And I think we're we're lucky where we are as well that they are we relatively mm. accessible in terms of travel yeah. time. Especially if you had the cliff top courses in. I think uh within 2 hours of where we live, I think there's some of the best cliff top courses without going all the way to the west coast. Mm. I think we've got some of the best in East Anglia. I really do. Yeah, definitely. Mm, good. So what, what what we're saying is, if we could only pick one, we will never play golf together again. Yeah. Because we've all yeah. picked a different style. Yeah, right. definitely. That'll be great for the channel. <laughs> and yeah. and Simon's, to. Simon's going to drive the furthest. <laughs> yeah, I've got to drive the furthest to play a decent yeah. one, yeah. To play a good one. Oh, well. They're good. I, yeah, it's good though. It'll I be think- good to get out. And, and try some more courses personally, you know, from my point of view, like you say, Adam, going, you know, you've played Lynx golf cor- courses, but actually going up to, to Scotland where you'd say arguably the, the better courses are. Yeah. yeah. Get and that I think feeling of a better golf course. You do, you do like, and, and I won't lie, you'll pay for the privilege, but mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah. like the price tag comes with it, but all of a sudden you'll see why that price tag sits where it sits and you just you do get a completely different experience when I went up there and played it just literally blew me away for, for five days I just couldn't I went up there thinking oh, I'm really that into this and came back thinking mm. oh absolutely stunning I can't wait to go back yeah yeah add in the Irish courses some I mean you add in cliff top courses and some of the ways that they've used the, the land out on the cliff edges and stuff it's just amazing again if you go i know i know we're plugging somebody else again but mm. you go back and you watch the irish tour from nlu like mm. yeah oh yeah it's just well, stunning golf course after stunning golf yeah 
Ballet, when we did the last podcast and we were, like, Ballet Bunyan was on the list of, of so like, played, the, yeah. my European pick. And um, yeah, I think those style of courses where it literally just threads you through the the terrain and, and the, you know, the natural sort yeah. of progression through the through the land is, I think that's pretty cool. I so yeah, back. we'll definitely try and get out soon. I need to go back yeah, to Bally Bunyan because yeah. it was the wettest, windiest day <laughs> in the world. Um, and my sister would have been, I don't know, maybe 13 or 14 when we went there. And it was so wet that her driver slipped out of her hands as she hit the shot. And I just remember this driver helicoptering <laughs> down the <laughs> we've, we've, we've all done that. Oh, yeah, this is accidental. Though. <laughs> mm. <laughs> right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. It was good fun, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah enjoyed yeah, that. It was yeah. really good. Excellent. Right. More research for me. Yeah, that was there was more trawling through the internet. I, I love that you keep setting me up with stuff like, right, we're going to do this, and then yep. I have to go away and do a load of homework. Did you feel like you learned something <laughs> even during the recording? Uh, yes, yes, very much so. And I hope people at home have done that that too and and picked up on because I, you know, links stuff, and I thought you know Heathland I felt was a bit linksy and it's sort of now a hybrid sort of type of golf course. So yes, it's yeah. good to know, and and it'll be fun to go and try them. Exactly. Right. So stay tuned. Episode three coming very, very soon, boys. Dream four balls. So if and when we're allowed to play golf again in more than groups of one or two, who are the four people that you want to make up your four ball? Three people. One three golfer people, maximum, yeah. two right. others, dead or alive. Stay tuned for that. Right. Okay. Very good. See you then soon. See you in a bit. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.